Bible of John, chapter 11. John, chapter 11. Verses 38 through verse 57. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by, there, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say that? to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them these things Jesus did. Then the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this is he who did not say on now this he did not say on his own authority. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. Therefore, Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim. And there he remained with his disciples. And the Passover of the Jews was near, and many of them went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priest and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it, that they might seize him. I think everybody in here knows what an APB is, an all-points bulletin. It's what the police issue when there's a the suspect that they, they want everybody to be on the lookout for. And uh, certainly uh, uh, we, can, we can look to that in the scripture today, but there's another APB that I want us to see from our scriptures today. And it's, it's obviously three simple things. The authority of Jesus. The A in the ABB is the authority of Jesus. Now, Jesus has authority over this earth. And why does Jesus have authority over this earth? Well, because he created this earth. He's the one that made everything that we see. Uh, we can look to the, the uh, earth and his authority over that on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, if you'll remember the story, the wind and the waves were crashing against the boat, and they, the disciples, they cried out to Jesus to help, and he stood up and spoke and said, Peace be still, and everything ceased. Uh, and in Matthew chapter 8, 27, it said, So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Jesus can command the sea to stop doing what it's doing. He can command the storm in, in, on the Sea of Galilee to cease. You see, the disciples came and they asked him for help. And it only took a word from Jesus. He just spoke the word and everything stopped. 
Now let me ask you, do you have storms going on in your life today? I think everybody does. We've all got little storms that, that come out all throughout life. And, and they pop up, sometimes without notice, sometimes we can see them coming. But we have to trust in the one that will get us through the storms of life. Do we, do we believe that Jesus will get us through the storms of life? You see, that's where it comes in. Do we believe that Jesus has the authority to calm the storms that are going on in our lives? We've got to trust in him. Jesus has authority over the demons of the world. In Luke chapter 4, verse 33 through 35. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. The demons of this world must obey the command of Jesus. Now there's two examples that I want to give you that, that I have personally heard from people that I know. One was many years ago, uh, a preacher friend of mine was telling me of another preacher friend of his that had happened to be standing on the, the street and he was proclaiming God's word on the street corner. And as he was proclaiming the word, I think he was standing on something where he was elevated. As he was proclaiming this word, there came up a group of people that were mocking him and threatening him. And his simple thing was, he said, I'm here under the authority of Jesus Christ. You have no power over me. I rebuke you. And just within a few moments, the group that came up to cause him problems just quietly walked away. You see, he believed that Jesus had power over the demons, the evil people of this world, and he proclaimed that authority of Jesus, and they disappeared. And then another thing that uh, a friend of mine relayed to me is that he had a friend that was doing some home repairs for this lady. And I, I think he was doing drywall or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. But he said while he was doing this work, he was singing Christian songs uh, because he was in a Christian band. So he was singing these Christian songs. And he wasn't doing anything but singing songs and praising God. And he said he turned around and the woman had an evil look on her face and jumped on him and began clawing at him. And he said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And she got up in her right mind again. Now, whether these things have happened or not, I don't know. I wasn't there. There are stories that were relayed to me by men that I trust what they're telling me. But those are two instances from what I have heard where Jesus uh, had authority over the demons of this world. Jesus has authority over death. Let's look back at verses 38 through 44. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lift, lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they might believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. You see, not only did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, he also brought a few other people back to life. We had the story of Jairus' daughter, in Mark chapter 5. 
uh, where he went in and, and Jesus was telling them, why are y'all grieving? The little girl is sleeping. And they began to mock him. And he told the little girl, rise up, get up. And she got up and, and went about her business. And then Jesus also raised uh, the only son of the widow of Nan. Uh, so Jesus has the authority over death. But the greatest authority over death that Jesus has is his own death and resurrection on the cross. But then it doesn't stop there. Jesus has authority over our death as well. If we are believers that are following and trusting in him as our Savior, then he has the authority to... Uh, raise us from the dead and give us eternal life with him in heaven. Then, then we get down to the P in our APB. The power of Jesus. Now, if I were to ask people out in the world, what do you think Jesus looked like? Do you think that he was this big, strong guy? I think most people would probably see Jesus as a humble man and fairly weakly physically. They, they wouldn't be thinking that Jesus was this strong, physical specimen of a man. But I can tell you that they're, they're completely wrong. Because if you know about Jesus' life, you know that he was a carpenter. He worked with wood. He was physically active in doing that job. But there's one thing that you don't, maybe, maybe you don't think about Jesus when you're thinking about his physical endurance. And that's that he had... Uh, spent 40 days in the desert without eating. Now, I don't know, how many of you can go a day without eating? You think maybe you might be able to make a week? Jesus went 40 days without eating, and he did it in the most uncomfortable atmosphere around. When, when, when I say desert, what are you thinking of when I say desert? Like a flat plain in a hot place? The desert in Jerusalem was a rocky, mountainous area. There was no life around there other than some animals going around. It was a horrible place to be in. And he spent 40 days there without food. And I can tell you, you have to have great physical strength to be able to endure 40 days without eating. But Jesus did it. He overcame the temptations that Satan threw at him to turn the stones into bread. So he was uh, a very powerful human being in, in a human body as well as being God in the flesh. And he also had uh, awesome healing powers. He took the, the blind people and he gave them back their sight. He took the lame and gave them back their legs. He took the leper and he cleansed their body. He took the deaf and gave them back their hearing. And he even had the power. And, and this is a miracle that, that I really don't understand in the midst of the garden with all of the, uh, the, the people that came to arrest Jesus. He had the power to take the ear of the servant of the high priest that was chopped off and put it back on and just touch it and heal it. Now, I don't know about you, but you'd think if them soldiers would have saw that miracle, they would have stopped in their tracks and said, Jesus is who he says he was, and I'm going to leave him alone. But they already had it in their heart to do evil, and they arrested Jesus and took him to the cross. But Jesus had the power to reattach that ear of the servant. Jesus has the power over nature, which I said earlier in the storm. Uh, but he also has power over the animals. Uh, if you'll remember the story where the disciples had spent all night fishing and they didn't catch anything. And Jesus commanded them, if you'll cast your nets on the right side, you'll find a hole. And Jesus commanded the fish to gather together on the right side so that when the disciples threw their net out, they caught such a load that it began to sink their boat. Jesus has the power over the animals. He also told uh, the disciples to cast out a line and catch a fish. And inside of that fish was going to be a coin so that they could be able to pay the taxes to Caesar. Now he commanded the right fish with the coin in his belly to get on the hook. Now I don't know about you, but do you ever catch the fish that's right in front of you? 
not likely. You're usually going to get the one that's hiding and you don't see. Because I, I don't know about you, when I go fishing, I can throw the line and hit the fish in the back with the hook and he'd still get away from it. But Jesus had the authority to tell that fish to be in a certain place at a certain time so that they could catch him and pay the taxes that they needed to pay. He also had the power to multiply the fish when he fed the 5,000. Uh, and, and the biggest thing is Jesus has the power over death. Death did not defeat Lazarus and it did not defeat Jesus on the cross. And death does not defeat us when we believe in Jesus. You see, Jesus also had the power to withstand all of our sins being dumped on his body while he was hanging on the cross. And I don't know about you, sometimes the, the things that I've done wrong in my life, they can weigh awful heavy on me. And sometimes we just don't have the physical strength to stand because of the things that we've done in our life. But imagine the whole world's sins being dumped on him. So he had awesome power. Jesus was not this 60 pound weakling. Jesus was a man. And he was a powerful man. To be able to endure all of that, he had to be physically powerful. And then the B in our APB is belief in Jesus. All of the authority, all of the power that Jesus had, none of that will mean anything if we don't believe in him. Look back at verses 45 through 48. Then many of the Jews had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Then the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. The people saw the authority and the power of Jesus, and then they believed. They believed. Now let me ask you, how is God's power and authority being displayed to the world today? Is God still doing miracles in our world today? <coughs> yes, I have seen them myself. Is God still bringing people back from the dead? Yes. There are stories all around the world where somebody has died and the people have prayed and Jesus has brought them back to life. There is definitely things that are going on in our world that bring glory and honor to God. And, and people need to believe that. But the world's not going to see that if they don't see that in us. If we don't believe what we're preaching, then nothing's going to happen. I watched a sermon from Francis Chan. I think we may have done a study with him. Uh, if not, uh, I don't remember. But he went into, uh, I think it, I, I can't remember where it was. I think it was somewhere in Africa. And he went in there and, and he said in his sermon, he'd always preached the, the, the power and the authority of God and, and the miraculous healings. But he said, he got up and he said, if there's anybody here that needs healing, come up now. This is a man that is not out selling healing miracles. He, he's not into any of that. He's a godly man preaching the word of God in power and authority. And he said people began coming up to him and getting healed. And he said he could not believe what God was doing in the midst of him. Now he doesn't go around and try to do healings and all that. This was a one time instance where God said this is what I want to do God is doing those powers for people to see all around the world but he's also looking for ways that we can allow Jesus to be on display with us people need to see Jesus actively working and living inside of us 
doing those things. Look at the, our last scripture, verses 49 through 57. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish. Now this he did not say on his own authority, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for that nation only, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Then from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. Therefore Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim. And there he remained with his disciples. And the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went from the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they saw Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think, that he will not come to the feast? Now both the chief priest and the Pharisees had given a command that if anyone knew where he was, he should report it and that they might seize him. You see, the Pharisees, they did not believe and they did not believe the message that Jesus brought. They did not believe that he was sent from God. The only thing they believed is what the high priest said, that Jesus was going to die. And that's what they stuck with. So they sought to arrest him, and they sought to kill him, according to the prophecy of Caiaphas. Now, our world today is getting further and further away from God. The persecution of Christians is growing daily. People are dying for their faith. And you know what? The world is going to come after us. The world is going to come after those that stand on the principles of God's word. And if you don't think that's going to happen, all you got to do, take a stand on God's word, put it out there on Facebook. I stand on this and this alone. What God's word says we need to do, we need to do. And you'll find people attacking you for your faith. One day, it's going to come to the United States that we are not going to be allowed to preach the Word of God accurately. We're going to have to preach it according to how the world wants us to preach it. It's coming. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. So what I want to know in your life is do you stand on the authority of God's Word in your life? Do you stand and have the power of Christ in your life. Do you believe? If you say yes to all three of those, then what are you doing with your faith? Is it being limited to you? We have a world to change. And it's not going to change by being quiet. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your precious word that guides us and keeps us on the straight and narrow path. God, I pray that you would help pastors to preach the word boldly. Yes, sometimes it's hard to hear, but we need to hear what you're saying to us. We need to stand on what your word says and not what this world wants to hear. Father, we do not conform the word to this world. We conform the world to your word. Father, help us. Father, we cannot do this on our own authority, on our own power, on our own strength. We can only do it through the power and authority of Jesus Christ that has been proclaimed over our lives when we've given our heart to Jesus. So, Father, help us to do that. And Father, if there's anybody today that is not standing on all of that, Father, I pray that you help them. Father, anybody that's listened to this on, on the video, I pray that you help them to have the strength and the faith to turn their life over to you. I pray that you help them, Father, because the days are growing darker. Time is running out. And Father, we need you. So help us, Father, in Jesus' name.